guys and gals, this is Sinekero with the IS-6 Tier 8 Russian Premium Heavy Tank. We are on Prokhorovka in an encounter battle, and this is a game where I raged a lot. I was on a losing streak, and this was my go-to tank to have a little bit of fun. Unfortunately, I got put into a Tier 9 match, uh, even though there are only three Tier 9s on each team. Uh, they are capable of penetrating the IS-3, no problems, and I'll have problems penetrating with them. So already I'm looking at the minimap and I'm thinking, No, what are you doing team? Why are you all going on one side of the map? Leaving an entire flank open uh, with only a couple of scout, scout tanks to cover it, and they're not really covering it anyway, because they've noticed that there's no tanks to support them and they're not going to throw away their lives. And also, you'll see there's an E-75 on that island on the top right corner. That is a very bad spot for E-75, especially when you are one of three tier 9 heavy tanks, or one of three tier 9 tanks, period. Not to mention the E-75 is great at frontal assaults, uh, but this E-75 is on the island sniping. <clears throat> so I was really angry at that and I'm just taking... Uh, well, I'm just looking for shots of opportunity right now. You can see that the T-54E1 did a great job at killing the scouts or at least two of them. <clears throat> so there's a T-69. Uh, took a quick shot through and managed to penetrate the T-69. Didn't really have that great armor on the front anyway. And bounced or absorbed a shot from the M103 and took a shot from something small. Not quite sure what it was. So we have left an entire flank open. Okay, so we have some spots over there. Uh, not great accuracy on the IS-6, so you can see the shot went straight into the turret of the Carnarvon and bounced off. Enemy team... Um, doesn't look like they have too much on the west side, which is a good thing, otherwise we probably would have lost already. If they all just even if it was just two of the tier 8 heavy tanks that just came charging through there, we would have troubles. Leopard prototype. And I managed to sneak a shot in onto the turret of the leopard prototype. And that's really only due to the scouting done by uh, certain tanks that are still there. You can see the trollish nature of the IS-6 armor. Uh, bounced and absorbed shots from the Ferdinand and something else. I did get a nice shot into the commander's hatch of the lion. And really we're just even right now with the enemy team holding the hill on the, uh, the the lower right corner of the map. Super pushing and a T69. I did get spotted, but let's see if I can actually take a shot in the map. Nope, went into the ground and I took a rather large shot. And that feels more like a leopard prototype shooting me. Now there was an E-75 spotted back at their base, or the enemy base, and kind of worried about where the E-75 went. And I'm trying to get some shots in. 
Super Pershing decides to kind of wave around, wait around, sorry. There, and I took careful aim at the hatches on the Super Pershing and dealt quite a large bit of damage to it. <clears throat> A shot onto the Carnarvon. Silhouette is not showing up for some reason, uh, but there was a silhouette when I fired on that Carnarvon, and I was actually hoping that that Carnarvon was gonna back off when it received so much damage. T25 AT, oh, got taken out by the IS-8. I shot it with Carnarvon, who did not move from its position from the last shot. Oh, E75. E75 is showing its presence. Gonna try and fire the max hatch. Oh, missed. It's starting to load the APCR, which only has 216 millimeters of penetration. But uh, because of the angle of this E75 is showing its lower plate to me, uh, it is quite easy to penetrate, <laughs> and it's taking quite a beating. That E75 I actually expected to just rush down here in order to escape from shots into the side. And if it did can't come down here, I would have had a much harder time in penetrating the lower plate of the E75 because of the angle it would be at. One shot away from death, this E75 is chilling behind a rock. And of course there is the enemy team capping the base right now. 53% and going up. I get spotted, still don't want to get shot at by the leopard prototype who is most likely still on the hill. And something else too, something large. T69. Bam! Not sure why there wasn't a silhouette there, but there was when. Yeah, well, in the game. This is the replay and somehow the silhouettes are not working properly. E75 fired its shot. Missed. And let's see, something, one of our guys, the SU-152 is on the cap. Uh, which is delaying them quite nicely. So what I need to know is get rid of this E75. Ah, he spotted me. Well, we'll keep going. E75... Aha! The side armor! I'm gonna wait till it, it, it stops paying attention. Maybe taking a shot as well. Before I go up. Not paying attention to me. There. And I take a, a pretty large hit from the Ferdinand, which is uh, over there. Let's keep on going. Ooh, bounce a shot from the Ferdinand. And the IS-6 is... The armor on the front of this thing is just ridiculous sometimes. Alright, there's the left prototype. Now I'm... I think at this point I was going crazy that that E75 hasn't gone up onto the hill to clear out that lever prototype because I don't want it shooting down at me. I'm keeping a uh, some sort of house or shack in front of me, just checking this in front so I don't get shot by the Ferdinand. Missed my shot on that lever prototype. Carefully aim, take it out. And now I deal with the Ferdinand. There is an IS-3 somewhere, uh, not been spotted the entire game. So here we go, aim, bam. And I get, uh, a, well I absorb a shot from, I presume, the IS-3, which uh, shot me from the bush line near uh, C2, I believe. 
That was another shot. I don't think that IS-30 was fully upgraded. Though. And Ferdinand was distracted, so I take him out. IS-8 gets shot in the back by the IS-3, uh, which is unfortunate. And I don't think we even spot this guy for the rest of the game. So I'll be reversing using the strongest part of my armor to protect myself. Just in case I was still spotted or the IS-3 decides to take speculative shots. And I'll just hide behind a building. We're gonna wait out the rest of this game. And this E-75 on our team is doing a great job at not getting on cap fast enough. I notify the E-75 that the IS-3 is most likely in that position and I'm going to get myself a little bit more cover as well. 1,272 points of experience earned in this match with a steel wall. We can see here I did 4,543 points of damage with 5 kills. Taking a closer look at the E-75 on both teams, well, our E-75 did a total of 412 damage, so going onto that little island and sniping is not a great idea. The E-75 cannon does not snipe that well. And uh, the enemy E-75, well, happened to meet a rather large amount of shells going into its side and lower plate, all of its weak points, when it came over that hill, so only zero damage for the enemy E-75. 18 shots fired, 14 hit, 13 penetrations, 11 hits received, 4 of them penetrated, 7 bounced off of me. And a potential damage of 3,790. Credits, well, 106,000 on a premium account, non-premium 68,000. I did fire a lot of premium rounds, uh, but this IS-6, I actually bought uh, quite a few premium rounds uh, when they were on special, so that's why there's no uh, resupply of ammunition cost on them. But I'm sure, you, well, you still get quite a, a lot of credits since this is a premium tank. Thanks for watching, please press that like button and leave some comments. I'll see you in future videos.